night, Cass. No, I gave the summary uh, a few minutes ago. And I got to get my beauty sleep. I'm sure you don't need much. <laughs> Later, Dr. Bennett. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. God. All right. God bless all. Bye now. Uh, real quick, uh, before we move on to the, the next thing, I've been holding this. I was having, I was working. I was sitting here doing a bunch of, like, bunch of work, you know, while y'all were doing your thing and wanting, I had to bite my tongue because I knew if I jumped in, I wouldn't turn my stuff in on time. So, <laughs> but uh, that thing about the train, I just wanted to to add one little thing to that. So, um, yeah, you were cooking on that uh, debate review, kids. Though. I was like, whoa, this man getting to it. But yeah, go ahead, continue. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, so the train, like the setup with the, uh, you know, a a, uh, a receiver, like a like a you know a lightning rod, a lightning rod at the front end of the of the train, a lightning rod at the back end of the train, right? And they try to make the crux of the argument the fact that the signal, like from the lightning rod electricity in a wire has to travel through the wires through the train to the middle but you can very easily like even remove that part of it too to make it even much simpler to think about because the real argument here is is not about a relativity of simultaneity about two events not actually taking place simultaneous it's about the observations of the light that travels to you not getting there at the same time based on it having a travel time and so what you if you just think about the experiment in terms of imagine the same setup train lightning rod at the front lightning rod at the back but each lightning rod is attached to a little uh like a like a hammer not a hammer like you hit a nail with but like a hammer like a lever like a lever with a switch and when the um when the light the lightning rods get struck the hammer falls and the switch flips, right? And it pushes up on a horizontal bar, a beam, a balance beam that's running across the entire floor of the train. And the midpoint, right? The midpoint of that has a little, has a little, uh, we'll just call it a little uh, rod on it. That's, that's very thin and vertical. And if it pushes up perfectly vertically, it hits the bottom of the bomb and explodes the bomb. Now, if the lightning rods are struck at, at different times, then the hammers will fall at different times. The switches will get flipped out of, out of sync, and the balance beam will not get pushed up perfectly vertically. It'll be tilted to one side, so the little activating mechanism will not activate the bomb. So by doing this, you make it a mechanical system with zero delay, and you don't have to argue about the electrons traveling through a wire to get to the midpoint of the train. It, it literally just depends on actual simultaneity of the lightning strikes. Okay. So then you're only talking about the difference between the observer's view of an event and the actual event itself. Right. And that's actually what the argument is about. It's about is the actual occurrence of an event the same thing as the observation of it and the answer obviously is no an event happens regardless of how you observe it to happen it happens on its own because that's it is what it is right like that's the reality if you know if uh if someone smacks a drum with a drumstick and i'm on the other side of the football field and the band's playing over there it takes a split second for that to get to me it doesn't mean that they hit the drum when i heard it they hit the drum before i heard it but the drum was hit at one definite point in time, just like with light. It's the same exact thing. When the lightning strikes, it strikes at one definite point in time. It might take the light a second to get to my eyes, but it still only happened at one moment. You can't have two events. You can't have it happening at two different times, right? It has to happen at one time. It's one event. And so if at the moment that the midpoint of the train is perfectly lined up with the observer stationary on the ground. If the observer sees, if the observer stationary on the ground sees the lightning strike simultaneously at the rods, it happened simultaneously. And so the bomb would blow up regardless of what the people on the train see. That shows that there's an absolute frame and that it happens with respect to that absolute frame. 
So is that the main contention, Piezo? Is that uh, in reality we we measure against this absolute frame, but in the science community they measure against light and need it to be constant? Yes. So so basically what they're doing, right? There's an absolute frame. That's what all measurements are taken against in reality. Anytime we measure something, we're measuring it in the reality that we live in, in the frame that we reside in. But with with light, right? Light's a wave. It has a travel time, just like every other wave. With every other wave, when you got a you know motion between the source and receiver, you know it, it creates a, a delay, and you perform a Doppler shift, right? There's a Doppler shift that happens to the wave. But with light, they arbitrarily decided we need to make it constant no matter what. So instead of Doppler shifting the light wave, we're going to use the Doppler shift formula, and we're going to Doppler shift the fabric of reality, and and we're going to perform a Doppler shift on space and time itself while keeping light as the constant instead of reality. So it's just an inverse Doppler shift that they did. Instead of shifting the wave, they shifted the world. Um, yeah. so that they could keep the light constant. Because if they didn't have constant speed of light, if C wasn't C all the time, as they say it is, they would never be able to use light as a universal yardstick for the sky to tell you what's happening a bajillion miles away and what it's all made of and how big it is. See, I was going to ask you, what are the consequences? If they don't have C as a constant, what is the kind? Con- and that's a, that right there is that's the problem. Not they needed what, to explain these phenomena. Well, no. Right. Well, well, hang on. So I don't. I don't agree with with. I, that was all stated as fact, and I don't think I agree with any of it. Uh, I didn't ask if you agree. That's fine. You don't have to agree. You never do anyway. Well, I'm just saying I don't. It's not fact. You're presenting it as fact, but uh, that's not the case. So, for example, the speed of light comes out of Maxwell's equations. If light does not have uh, a specific speed, then uh, everything we know about, you know, light, the behavior of the electromagnetic spectrum is wrong, which means none of our technology would work. So that yeah, it's you know, it's you're right, but once once again, that's based on the properties of the medium through which the light wave travels, just same as any other wave. You know, you, there's a certain speed for a sound wave. There's a certain speed for a wave in water. You can take the velocity of a, you can find the velocity of a wave by multiplying the frequency times the wavelength. Mm-hmm. C equals uh, lambda f, and that gives you the speed. Okay, it works for light. It works for any wave. And go ahead. Uh, no, I mean yes. So light has to have a specific speed, and then the the test, which started with Nichols and Morley. Uh, came to the fairly jaw-dropping conclusion that it has the same speed regardless of what reference frame. Well, hold on. Has. Before before you jump there, let's stay like on where we're at. We can move there. That's fine. But let's make sure that we have this ironed out because you, know, you claim that what I said was incorrect. If lights got a constant speed, that's, that's constant based on the medium once again, right? So it's a medium. Because a wave, a wave in and of itself is nothing. It's just a vibration, no, right? No, a wa- no. Please no. don't, please don't cut me off. Oh, you just asked talking. me a question. Oh, I'm still talking. So, a wave is not anything in and of itself. It is just a disturbance, a vibration, a perturbance in a medium. There's a wave speed in air. There's a wave speed in water. There's a wave speed in all kinds of different fluids. Right? You can calculate what it is for whatever fluid you want to pick. But the fact is that they all follow the same set of equations for their behavior. And if you know the properties of that medium, you can then calculate what the speed will be plus all the other variables. Now, if that medium through which the light is moving, if there is relative motion of that medium or between the receiver and and source, either way, it's the same thing, Galilean relativity, right? Then your velocity will now be the velocity of the wave plus or minus the relative velocity between the emitter and source or the Doppler shift equation of that. And so that is what you do with every wave, like I said. But then they said you don't do it for light, and that's where you get into Voigt's equations 
Voigt's and Lorentz's equations that Einstein copied and used in his theory, that's where that comes from. It's actually a Doppler shift. That's what they did. Except they just didn't Doppler shift the light wave. They Doppler shifted reality. Okay. So you uh, should look into are it. you going to keep keep talking? or why no, I'm finished. You, I, you should look into it. I have. Um, so I have a question about the first thing that you disagreed with, that I disagree with that you said was that if you have a a physical hammer that falls when the lightning hits, uh, it will, you know, somehow clear all of this up. And that's not true. Where is the, so the logic that determines if those two hammers fell at the same time has to be somewhere, right? Presumably it's with the bomb in the middle of the train. Yeah. There is a horizontal metal bar, okay? Horizontal metal bar stretching across the entire length of the train. It's okay. it's balanced. We don't need to talk about the balance mechanism. We'll just say it's free floating, okay? Mm -hmm. But when you if it's free floating perfectly level in the exact center of it, there's like a tiny little detonation pin where that mm -hmm. detonation pin, if it gets pushed perfectly into the little slot that it just fits just right in mm -hmm. in the bomb, it'll explode the bomb. Uh -huh. So the idea is that when that hammer falls, it's gonna hit that balance beam. So, now, if but if the left end of the balance beam and the right end of the balance beam are hit perfectly simultaneously, then the whole thing will remain. Ho dude, it faster. will remain. Please. Dude, you're not going to sit here and rush me, bro. Like I'm oh. talking, you need to stop interrupting. It will, it will, it will get hit with the hammers, and if it gets hit perfectly simultaneously, it will remain horizontal and level. And the little pin in the middle will go into the slot for the bomb. If it does not get hit perfectly simultaneously on the left and right ends, then one end will go down before the other. It will not remain horizontal, and the pin will not go in the bomb, and it will not detonate the bomb. So when the lightning strikes, if it is truly simultaneous, it will blow the bomb up. And if it's not truly simultaneous, it will not. You don't have to worry about electrons traveling through a wire anymore. It's just the one event when it happens, snap your fingers, bam, is that simultaneous. So that was a lot of – so part of talking to people, it's having like a back and forth. And if you just go on and on and on and don't, you know, don't pause to, to let the other person interject, then it doesn't work, right? So first off, the that bar – can only respond at the speed of sound in that bar. That's the that's as fast as any any compression or anything can move through it. So no, that just makes the problem worse. But we're gonna I, wait, 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 just for no, 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 Piso. No, the bar is not perfectly rigid because it exists in real life. So no, you can't do that. But oh, well, trains don't because no, the now, now, life, now, 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 now you're interrupting me. Hold on, Piazzo. Let him let him finish. Go well, ahead, um, Omni. Well, hold on a second. I was, I, 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 you know, we could go ahead, but if I say if what I say is twenty seconds, and then I ask for a response, and then what he says is twenty minutes, and then says you can't interrupt me, you can't interrupt me, that's no good. I'm not, I'm not up for that. What I have to say is I don't give you so long to cry, man. I'm saying go ahead and make your point. I, I moderated yeah, it. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. So, no, you don't get a perfectly rigid bar. That doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't resolve anything. You've just made up something. You know, you've made up another thing to include in the thought experiment to uh, suggest that, that this, this problem won't happen. But, no, you, you can't do that. Light, if light and electrons have to travel, so does the rigidity of the bar. It doesn't work. Yeah. So now you're going to dictate to me and say that's no fair. I'm not allowed to have a perfectly rigid bar. I mean, I gave you a train that goes near the speed of light. That doesn't exist either. But I guess that's okay, though, right? Well, we agreed on the train going at the speed of light. We don't agree on the rigid bar. Yeah, it's a thought experiment. If you don't want to step into my thought experiment because it damages your paradigm, that's fine. But you can go complain somewhere else. It's my thought experiment, not yours. No, I'm fine with stepping into it. But this idea that there's some, so, some physical solution that you don't have to worry about the nasty electrons is just is just nonsense. It, you know, your solution is I now have something that moves faster than the electrons because I have declared that I have a bar of unobtainium that will magically do this. 
Okay, the bar is quantum entangled from end to end. There you go. How about that? Doesn't work. No, that it, it, it won't work. Won't work either. <laughs> Do you, do you, do you, what do you think quantum entanglement is? How do you think that works? Omni, I'm not playing this game with you, dog. You're not going to sit here and tell me I'm not allowed to have whatever I want to have in my thought experiment. Because I know, I know how rigidity works in, in solids and because I know how quantum entanglement works. Yeah. I imagine you, do, you don't want to sit here and do this with me. It's oh, a I thought it's experiment. <laughs> thought experiment omni yep. it's all made up to begin yep. with but so what peter said about how these thought experiments work is that they work as an internal critique of the uh of, of the scenario so you, you don't have to carry out the experiment you say is there a violation of causality the causal ordering postulate where a effect precedes a cause or is there a effect of two different results seen from different reference frames. <clears throat> and the answer is, there's not. The, the video that whoever it was played, you know, the, the, the audio of it, agrees with that. And you, you can put whatever you want in the thought experiment, but we both have to agree that the thought experiment, that, you know, we both have to agree what goes into it. You can say, I okay. have this perfectly rigid bar, or I'm making up some new kind of quantum entanglement, but, you know, that, that, no, I don't agree to that, but I will agree there's a train with a bomb on it. We both uh, agreed to that. Okay, so you're talking about I'm not allowed to invoke a bar that violates the relativistic definition of causality. But relativity is what we're debating here. I don't accept your definition of violations of causality because for you, violations of causality is anything that goes faster than C. I know of plenty of examples of things that do that, so I don't accept that premise to begin with. You can't use the thing being argued as a substantial basis to defend itself. That's circular reasoning. No, that's not what I'm doing. What you can't do is say, oh, well, you say nothing can go faster than light, so I'm making up this hypothetical thing that goes faster than light. The question of the – so the, the question of the paradox – is if two different observers in different reference frames perceive an event as simultaneous or not simultaneous, does, uh, you know, can you have an, an outcome where the bomb does not explode and one where it does? That's the paradox. And the answer is when you do the math for it, you don't have the paradox. The bomb doesn't explode, even though. The person on the on the uh, platform sees the strike simultaneously. The bomb traveling with the detectors inside the train does not see it simultaneously, and the train doesn't have to be going at the speed of light either, as long as the, the transmission would have to be uh, at the speed of light. So, so ask, answer me this then, since you're trying to make it so complicated and you won't even buy into a thought experiment to answer a thought experiment for a paradigm that's not testable, the effects of which are not testable. When the lightning strikes the two rods, okay, do you believe that the occurrence of the vent of the event is separate from the observation of the event or do you think that events can only happen as observed uh i don't understand the okay. question but I if don't the lightning happens. strikes at one point in time i don't think it, there's one point in time yeah exactly Right. You you believe that time is not constant, it's not continuous. You believe that space is not constant, it's not continuous. You believe the only thing in all the universe that's constant and continuous is light. And every well, maybe not continuous, but constant. Everything else in the universe warps and bends because light is its universal dictator and ruler and changes everything else around it. You think the fabric of reality itself is subject to change more than light. So that was a good rant about telling me what I think, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you need to work on your internet. Do you disagree, yes or no? Yes, I disagree. 
So you think that light's not more constant than space and time? You said a whole lot of stuff, and I did not agree with all of it. You, if you what about you, that you specific will... question? Do you agree that light, uh, light. That you can't bend and warp what space can? Like, well, I think I think that light does, in fact, that that uh, I you know gravitational lensing is a thing. Yes, we, something we observe. Okay, so you agree with that? Is more constant than the fabric of space and time itself. What is it? Say again. You believe yeah. that light's velocity is more constant than the fabric of space and of time itself. I wouldn't say so, but what I would say is the speed of light is the fastest rate of causality that we can experience in space time as it also not true well that's what i would that's what i would say so you know trying to put words in my mouth might be better just to ask the question about what i think well What's give an example right? against against that point, against like, point. Right. No, so because he said that uh he doesn't necessarily agree that uh, the velocity of light is more constant in space and time. So what's the what's the inverse? It's that th there's the velocity of light, the speed of light in a vacuum is as constant as space and time because they are directly related. It's not more constant, not less constant. It is, it, that, that is the cause of the constant. You know, there's fluctuations in a vacuum. Yes. Mm. This would be the Casimir fluctuations, I would I would guess. Zero point energy, all kinds of stuff. But the uh, point being I see I actually know what that is too. So the 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 point being that in reality the speed of light is not measured as constant. It's measured as variant. It has a summation component, C plus or minus V. That's how it's measured. That's what interferometry and radio waves show. Okay. So what so you're talking about the, I guess the Sagnac effect. Uh different things. We've got the Sagnac effect. We have superluminal speeds of energy propagation. There's lots of things that show uh, that light speed is not constant. So I don't so I don't agree with that. Uh you know, and if we look at them closely it turns out every time we every time I've looked at it closely with someone, it vanishes in a puff of logic. But well, Omni, yeah. like you wouldn't. So let's just say that uh, this is the example that I threw out there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, me and X was talking about it. If they assume that sound was constant, and they experience of uh, a variation, wouldn't they say that this time dilated? Sorry, if they assumed that sound was constant. Yeah, just so, like they assume that light is constant. And then when we experience that variance, you say it's time dilated. So if we assume that sound was constant and then we experience some type of variance depending on the medium that is propagating through, wouldn't we attribute time dilation to that observation as well? So that that's it's possible, but it would be based on uh, a bunch of really bad data as opposed to being based on uh, enormous amount of experimentally of experimentally proven uh, data. So, but you do agree it only takes one time to falsify some a claim, right? Like I don't need a, a, the same amount of evidence. All I need to do is falsify a claim once in order for it to be invalid. Sort of. You only have to falsify it once if the test that falsifies it is repeatable. Just because you say I detect, you know, I falsified the speed of light on my home interferometer and nobody else can can produce that 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 doesn't work right you have it has to be a test that's repeatable that it, it happens in every interferometer every closed loop interferometer in the world if you move it okay so you move an interferometer actually i mean linear interferometers work too people just denied that until recently but if you um, if you spin playing, it, right yeah he's oh, wrong wrong. around here shout out to Wong. Yeah, that, that 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 doesn't get you there. I know about Wang. <laughs> well, apparently you don't, because uh, 
Your boy Wang showed that the generalized Sanyak effect is what's always been measured. My 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 boy Wang uh, took out a, a patent for a device that doesn't actually work. So. Oh, you're gonna say it doesn't work? It sounds like a positive claim. Can you demonstrate that? Patent ran out. How does that have anything to do with it not working? Well, show me that it works. You just said it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, that my my evidence is the patent ran out and. His linear interferometer detecting motion has to be hooked up to another system. So it's not like it works, it'll work in your car. Hold on a second. If, if I invoke a patent as evidence of it, of it working, you would say it's just a patent. Yeah. But you're allowed to say the patent ran out. That means it doesn't work? What kind of logic is that? So what kind of logic it is, is you're claiming that my boy Wang has broken the paradigm and i'm saying no not really no yeah but we asked you why you said his patent ran out so piazza was saying well we if we said hey he's got a patent for something that works yeah and that's and that's proof of why it works because he has a patent would you accept that no you don't so have to don't you see how logically so don't you see how logically flawed that is that I, when we use that, when we use the inverse of your argument, you won't accept it. But then you use that as your argument for evidence. Don't you almost, see? Almost, almost sacred. You're, you're, you're almost there. I'm almost. Not at, you're almost. Go ahead, explain to me. Close. You don't have to accept my position on this. The what that what my response to was to was a claim that the uh, whatever mainstream model of science or relativity writ large or whatever you want we're has not been broken about, by this has been broken by this and yeah, we're, why, we're not talking about accepting it though we're talking about your approach to why we should accept it. yeah we're, and if somebody if, if somebody in the debate says you know you know i have this this secret knowledge of this uh this new effect that you know changes everything and i know about it too you know i can i i get to respond flippantly yeah yeah, but you you would think that if you if you make an argument, the inverse of that argument should be valid as well. But you're no. saying if you no. make the same argument, where if I had a patent, that means it's evidence of something. Okay. You said, you're, no, you're, that's not it. Hold on, 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 hold on. You keep on saying I'm close, but you're not addressing what Piezo asked you. I you, know, you said the reason why it's invalid is because the patent ran out. That's what you said, right? No, no, that's not what I said. What? Not what I said. I didn't say it's okay. invalid because the patent ran out. I said, okay, what, you I, say? Sa I said his doesn't work. device doesn't work. So you're playing semantics with, with Sacred right now? I mean, no, Semant Sacred is playing semantics with me. No, so, I'm not playing semantics. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. So you're saying, right, so a, I'll, I'll make it real clear. If a patent runs out, that means the device doesn't work. No. Is that what you're I'll make it real clear. The claim that was made by Piezo was that Wang had done this magnificent thing. And my response to that was, you know, I don't think so. Just, you know, th th that there is a patent doesn't doesn't mean to be that it works. I was I never even brought up the patent. You brought it up. Yeah, I know. But I know I knew where you were going. <laughs> no, nah, man. See, this is what I'm talking about. You can't you can't you just told him that he can't tell you what to say or what to think. And now you're saying, oh, I, I foresaw what you were about to say. You were about to talk about the patent, so that's why I brought I, it up. I and, then you try to, and then you try to make it seem like we were talking about the I, patent. I can, when, I can, when, really, when really we didn't bring up the patent, you said, no, it doesn't work because the patent ran out. Right. So so, the out, patent, yes. so, are you, so are you saying if patents run out, that that means that devices don't work? Nope. But I, I'm telling you this. Oh, I, I don't see the logic. I have, logic a, I have unique power. To read minds over TCPIP. So All right, bro, you're trolling now, bro. Actually, like you're, can, you're spiraling. You're spiraling. Like I'm not spiraling. I understand that. I understand what you think. I've, I've given you my response for. Well, it. because we're listening to what you're saying, that's why we're thinking what we're thinking. Yeah. So if you bring up patents and say that that object that that device over there doesn't work because the patent ran out, I'm gonna assume you mean, hey, when patents run out, that means that the, the devices don't work. Okay. And if that's not what you mean, then you have to explain the relevance it's of a, not, a patent it, running. It's not what I mean. And the fact that this device, that this claim device does not exist in any tangible form that we can look at means that I don't find the claims about Wang's 
breakthroughs in interferometry to be, uh, you know, to be especially impressive. In other words, the fact that he wrote the paper, which and it's a pretty good paper, and the fact that he applied for a patent, and you know, it's a valid application for a patent, altogether means very little in terms of proving that the mainstream model of the Thanyak effect is wrong. But what does that have to do with the patent running up? Because I know he was gonna he was going to the device. <laughs> he was what? He was going to go to the device, to the to the the fact that this was a sub, substantiated claim because the paper had led to a patentable device. So devices don't work unless it has a patent? No. So devices can work if it doesn't have a patent. It can't could, yes. Do devices work if patents run out? They could. So then what is why did you bring up this patent? Because that's where he was gonna go and because the device my you I, are, my what assessment evidence, sacred, 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 what sacred, evidence what evidence sacred. do you have that he was gonna go to, to patent? I can read minds over TCPIP. So you have no evidence. I don't need evidence. I'm telling you what I'm Now saying. you don't need evidence. When we're talking about the sciences and devices and how things I work. I don't need evidence when, that that was where Now you're just go. projecting and assuming. Bro, there's no logic behind this. And I'm okay. trying to learn, but if you're just going to no, like, make sacred. arguments devoid of... Hey, look, if you're just going to make arguments devoid of logic, I just... I gave you every opportunity to educate me on how these patents work and why it's relevant to whether the device works or not. And the the last the very ending of all my questions is I thought he was going to talk about patents. That's why I brought it up. That is the 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 sole foundation of your whole argument, which is has no rational logic behind it at all. Uh, and it's well, been relevant to the conversation, doesn't seem like because you wasn't able to substantiate oh, why it's relevant. Sacred, sacred. You might be new in this space, but I've been around a little bit. Like, bro, you don't got a gas like me. I'm you just, can't I'm address the you point know. that Piezo. I'm you can address. Letting you know. You I'm, gonna, I'm you know, getting to it. Care about I what am, you think about I'm me, bro. Getting I'm getting to it. Sacred, you. sacred. You're not, you're not talking about sacred, what Piezo asked you. Don't talk about me, bro. Don't talk about me. You know what? You know what? How are you trying to talk over the host? I'm talking about you personally. Don't talk about me personally. Address what Piezo said. What is the relevancy to the patents right now? If you don't have any logical answer, then just say it was bullshit and we can move on. You might need to unmute. Ah, I thought I would be unmuted. So, Piezo. Were you going to talk about the Wang interferometer patent? Actually, Omni, I just said the generalized Saniac effect, and then you said, oh, I know about Wang. And then I told you, your boy Wang showed that it was generalized, and then you said, oh, no, I don't accept that. And then you're like, the patent ran out. I didn't even have a chance to go anywhere with it. I but know. Where, but, I, but, where but, I would have went was to the actual research that he did twice with the U.S. Naval Research Lab, who were the ones who loaned him the equipment yep. and collaborated and helped him to perform this research work. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you're going to you, – so, so I don't need the patent at all because the patent came four years after those experiments. I know. Yes, I know. Okay, so it was an effect that was demonstrated. It wasn't a device. It was an effect Yes. with or without a patentable device – that has no bearing on the effect being real. That. I'm talking about the effect. So do you have anything to say against the demonstrated effect in the yes. in Naval Research Lab? Yes. That effect. So the SAGNAC or the, the Wang device uses uh, a fiber optic uh, gyro or an inter interferometer on a moving platform that is attached to a stable platform. And it measures its movement relative to that stable platform. So it does not measure the generalized motion of something on which both the stable platform and the moving platform, the conveyor belt, would be. Uh, wait, wait. What's the stable platform? The other piece of it. When you, if you look it, at the, the, you mean the spinning ring? Yeah. How is that stable? It's moving. It's not moving through. It's not moving through space like the conveyor belt is. 
they're moving exactly the same. They're synced up to each other. There's a cable uh, connecting them so that they move at the same rate. Right. But the point is that that what he's measuring is on the conveyor belt. That he's measuring the the linear interferometer on the conveyor belt. You know that that fiber optic loop that's wrapped around the little turn dials is attached to the FOG, which is reading it, right? Yes. So these measurements are being taken with respect to what? They're being the uh, measurement of the fog on the conveyor belt is taken with respect to the other to the other piece of it. And they're move they're co moving, right? So they're moving together at the same velocity. No. Uh, uh, what? Oh, so you want to go to the paper right now and show me that that loop and that that conveyor belt are not moving at the same rate? Yeah. Okay, pull it up. No, I don't. How do we share? All right, I got it up on the screen right now. Give me one second. And I'll I'll be clear about what I mean before we get well while he's doing that. So the the. Part, the part that's not on the conveyor belt, I don't know how they refer to it. There's a loop, yeah. and the loop is attached via a cable to the okay. conveyor belt. Okay, so the loop is not on the conveyor belt. No, it's beside it, it's sitting right next to it. All right, real quick before you guys continue, if you if anyone in the audience wants to follow along, I'm streaming this on the side. You can see uh, the diagram of what they're talking about, but I'll also put it up in the space as well. All right, go ahead and continue, lads. So what one second, let me means, try to get to yours. One ask one second, Alan. Go ahead, Omni. So what that means is that if you put this thing in your car, it's not going to detect the motion of the car. It's going to detect the motion of the linear interferometer on the conveyor belt. Stay in the lab. Stay in Wang two thousand four. I'm not talking about the patent. Well, I'm that. Okay, so then yes, he demonstrated an effect, and it was interesting, but it doesn't fundamentally change anything. Okay, so what? The, he, right, well, he, well, what he showed. Let let me explain. What did he show? No, let me ask you, since you said it didn't fundamentally change. What was the effect he showed? Because obviously there was a whole point of writing a paper about it. If if there was an effect, what was the yeah, effect? That he was able to show motion in in linear interferometry. Okay, so, and that motion was proportional to velocity, right? Mm hmm Okay, so is that allowed under relativity? Yes. <laughs> really? Yep. So then, why didn't Mickelson-Morley show it? Because. There's not what he's, Huh? Because what he's, because what he's showing is the motion of the linear interferometer relative to the loop. He's not showing the motion of the relative of the of the moving fiber optic gyro or the the fiber optic gyro on the conveyor belt compared to the motion of a car that it's in or whatever or some other moving object. It's only relative to the loop, which is which is why it works. Relative the, the effective time. length, though, right? It's not just like it's the whole loop. It's the effective section that, that's moving. It's not relative to the whole of the loop. It's only relative to the effective length, which is key to to differentiating between what you're saying, uh, where where in Einstein relativity, you know, it would be relative to some other point, but that's not what's happening here. It's the effective length, so it makes the measurement with respect to absolute space, which is, you know, a, a violation of the postulates. So right. I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't agree with that. Okay. However, however, well, Wang is probably better at physics than I am. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely give him that. So I would have to cite other people who have looked at that and their analysis of it. I could send you some recommendations that were sent to me to try and explain it through the relativistic paradigm. There was a paper by Tartiglia and others in 2014, a guy named Barada in 2020, and then a more recent paper in 2024 that Mordwan linked the other night that we read. They offer no real explanation into how this would work uh, in the relativistic paradigm. 
and they just set up for a geometrically convenient, you know, transformation. And then they don't apply link contraction or time dilation, obviously, because those effects would be way too small. And these are first order measurements like pro directly proportional to the velocity. So it's not an issue of like um, a relative frame. And then it's a function of the square of the velocity over C squared. Yes, just, just so you know, Omni, this picture on Alan's, can you make it bigger again, Alan, real quick? Yep. Oh, it's up in the space. Sorry, it's up in the, sorry, I didn't, okay. Do you, it's in the Jumbotron, Omni. You see this picture? Uh, I do not. Okay, it's, scroll all the way left in the Jumbotron. Um, I don't see it. I don't know where is the jumbotron. The jumbotron is the space chat, like the chat for the spaces where you see everybody's name and we're all talking in it. You look, you scroll up to the top of that, and there's like posts at the top mm. that you can click on. Right. Just scroll up all the way to the top in the space. I'm scrolled all the way up to the top. I see PhD night, uh, flat Earth Friday. Yeah. Right underneath that, there's posts. I don't see the post. I see something crowd floor headquarters. Um, you click the, left, click the left arrow all the way left. Okay. If hey, not, what, I'll just tag you. Hey, what, what, Either way. I'm figuring that out real quick. Sacred, can you take my co-host and then I'll, I'll I got to refresh. I'm like, I got a memory leak. Okay, I got you. Okay, so this, what he does here, Omnivore, is in this image, right, he's got... Uh, FOGB, and it's being used to to read the friend shifts that happen. So, when these when this loop is stationary, right, and there's light passing through it, okay, you've got at, when it's not moving, right, when it's not so the wheel's not spinning, it's got a certain fringe on one side of the loop and the other, okay. Mm -hmm. Then, when it's set into motion, the fringe pattern shifts. It in, it undergoes a fringe shift, and it has a new fringe pattern. So you can see the shift. The shift on one side of the loop, okay, is different from the shift on the other side of the loop. And he's able to subtract and take the difference of the fringe shifts. And the difference of the fringe shifts is directly proportional to the velocity with which the loop is rotating. And right. he, he's also able to take it and, and use it with the FOG to show the fringe shift in the FOG. And they match each other. So he can use right. the, the linear equation or the radial equation, and they both yield the same result. Now, the problem is, is inside that fiber optic loop, right, that's a closed loop that's just rotating around space. There, well, sh You should not be able to move that loop and internally have a difference in French shifts that's proportional to the velocity. So... Well, I don't agree with that. So the, what you've got is you've got a uh, translational velocity, essentially. With respect You're to what? Linear, the rotate, the, whatever the, the loop is versus the thing moving linearly back and forth on the conveyor belt. No, no, that's just the measurement device, right? And so the reason that he has it on the conveyor belt is because that bottom half of the loop with the V arrow pointing to the left, right? Uh yeah. And the FOG with the V arrow pointing to the left? I don't know if I'm looking at the same thing that you are. They they are co-moving. So what ha what that means is according to the rules of Einstein, if you go read his 1905 paper right now, if yep. you have two objects that are uniformly co-moving, they are considered to be part of the same inertial frame. So that FOG is in the same frame as that optical fiber, there's no difference. So within an inertial frame, there being no relative motion between everything in the frame, because there's a it's a closed loop, so there's no relative motion in the light path, because it's a closed loop, there should not be 
a friend shift. Not only is there a friend shift, there's a friend shift that is directly proportional to the translational and radial velocities. So if you, you have go ahead. When you have a fiber optic gyro and you're turn and it's spinning, right? And you're moving around with your fog spinning away. Well, not spinning, just spinning uh, on a on a very small scale. You will see a fringe shift proportional to your to your motion, right? So if I if in a particularly clever way to go from linear to from rotational uh, motion to linear motion. Okay, but once again, the fringe shift is not happening in the, happening in the FOG. It's happening inside the optical fiber. The FOG is just measuring it, right? And it's moving uniformly so that it can be establish the same reference frame just so you can't say it's a difference based on the measurement device. The measurement device is within the same frame as the closed loop that's move, that's rotating. So the friend shift is taking place inside the optical fiber, which is a closed loop. If you say that one half of the loop, the bottom half, is experiencing a different friend shift than the top half of the loop, which it is, and the difference of those is proportional to the velocity with which it's rotating. With w respect to what is the f is the measurement being taken or with inside the, f the optical fiber? If you say one half of the loop to the other half of the loop, that doesn't produce anything under relativity. It does if the loop with respect to what frame is the loop if itself producing a fringe shift? If the loop is turning, then you will you will get a fringe shift. With respect to what? Uh, with respect to the observer outside of the turning object. Where's the okay? So the observer here is the detector. No, but the but the observer here is the thing moving back and forth. N no, the observer here is the device that's registering the friendship. That's the observer. That's where the friendship's taking place. Is where the observer's taking the measurement. Right. So so the observer is on the conveyor belt. Which is co-moving with the loop, so it's no, part of it's the same not, frame. It's not it, co-moving with the loop. It is co-moving with the loop. Because the loop is moving rotational. And it's that the, the loop part, is, so, it, so the loop is not on the conveyor belt. The loop is got a section. Once again, Alan told you it's a segment. It's got a section there that's a straight line on the bottom half and a section there that's a straight line on the top half. Right. That FOG is able to take a segment of that straight section and calculate the friend shift within that segment. And within that segment, it's all co-moving. I, I, so, I, no, I don't agree with that. If you don't have the if, the, if the fiber optic loop isn't a loop that is subject to the, the Sagnac effect and uh, if you don't have it connected to the device on the conveyor belt, then you know I don't think that that I, you know I don't think you've shown you, you've shown something that's extremely clever and interesting, but it, I don't see how that's a violation of relativity. Then why was the velocity proportional well, at all? Why wasn't it just random and chaotic? It it couldn't have been proportional randomly. No, I'm not claiming it's random. I'm okay, so it's co-moving. Yeah. Well, it's not. The, uh, so, so, bro, so the segment say, is co-moving. So the segment is not is not co-moving. One of the 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 fiber optic loop is a loop that is rotational, right? The straight section is moving in a straight line. It doesn't turn until it gets to the post. That whole middle part is a straight path. Doesn't matter. It's part of a loop. So you're saying that a straight line is rotating? I'm saying that a, a straight line as part of a loop is rotating, yes. Go read Einstein's paper uh, where he says – about he talks about the equivalency between a linear path and a closed loop. All right, but I mean, you know, it, the the fact is, it's a loop that is moving, uh, and there's a a you know the device that's reading it is on the conveyor belt, and you know this is not this 
you know, if you do this without a loop, I'll start being impressed. If I Ooh. do this. With... Ooh, if you, so if, well, it's funny you mentioned that because in the Wang paper, if you scroll down from the conveyor configuration, he does a parallelogram where the source and detector are stationary and it's just the effective length at the top that's able to move. The side pieces cancel each other out and the bottom segment is stationary. So when he's measure when he's moving that top portion, again, the fringe is with respect to the effective length. So in that, in that scenario where the detector, you know, is an inertial observer, just stationary, the measurement is being made with respect to absolute space. Um, cause otherwise relativity theory predicts that there will be no fringe. I'll have to look at that. It's been a while since I've since I've read it's that. It's the part. same exact effect. It has the same exact data graph plot as the as the gyro on the conveyor belt. I'm just I'm just telling you that the gyro on the conveyor belt doesn't uh it, it doesn't get you where you need to go. So maybe the parallel it, it does. Maybe, you maybe don't the parallel understand it. Well, well, that, that, I'm that's sorry that you're unable to comprehend it, Omni. Like this is why I don't communicate with you very often because I could spoon feed you your alphabet. And you would start speaking in another language. Okay, I I I got I got you. Yeah, I included the, the parallelogram that... configuration up at the top. If you want to take a gander at it, if you found the uh, the the thing at the jumbo on the first one, if you scroll I... into the left one more, it's up there as well. Yeah, inside the he'll never be able to answer this question, and I challenge you to answer it, but I know you won't. Inside the optical fiber, because the fringe shift is happening inside the fiber. It's happening in the fiber. That's that's. If it wasn't, then there wouldn't be a friend shift at all. All right. With respect to what is that friend shift taking place? You've got one point in the fiber and another point in the fiber, and between those two points, there's a friend shift. So the friend shift happens when the light is recombined, right? No, the friend shift is happening continuously at any two points well, throughout that fiber. So there's, there's light going in one direction, there's light going in the other. Yep. And when those light when the light the light is split and then recombined, yeah. Yeah, but it travels that's in how, two paths. That's how, right. Two directions rather. Yes, correct. So the friend shift is happening because the, you know one portion of the light is moving different is moving essentially a different distance. Different distance with other. respect to what? With respect to the uh, the it, in fiber optic gyros, it's with, with respect to the position of the gyro in free space. Mm, the gyro in free space. Well, it looks like that gyro and that bottom half of that loop are moving at the same exact rate, so there's no relative motion between them. So there's that, no change in path length. That it, no, that that. So that's where we disagree. That's where I disagree with you. There's no change in path length, Omni. How does the path how does the path length on a closed loop change? Uh, so it can change if the if the loop is moving, right? The effective distance can change. Oh, if it's moving oh, against. oh, you, that's you, how bingo. that's how five that's how fiber optic gyros bingo, work. Right? Bingo, bingo, Omni. It can happen if the loop is moving, but see, the loop is the path of the light. So right. there's no relative motion between the light and the light path. That, because the, no, that's not true. Uh, ho hold that's... on. There's no relative motion between the light and the light path because the loop itself is the path. So that means if motion is causing a friend shift, mm. then it has to be motion against something that's not the loop itself that's present in the loop. No, well, the absolute space. No, it's the no. The ether. <laughs> no. No, you have it on me. It's right there in front of you. You said it. Uh, okay. You did say space. Well, it's, yeah, it, it, like, fiber optic gyros actually do work. There's no question about that. So if you're moving a fiber optic gyro around, you know, it's got three degrees of, uh, of, uh, you know, activity. It can check movement in each of those, along each of those axes. It works for that. There's no question. How do you have a path length change inside of a closed loop omni? Only I'm, if something is dragging the light. No. Or if the light can, is being dragged against something. No, because the no. light 
the loop is rotating through space. The loop is and rotating. It, yes. Look at look at the look Okay, at the so diagram. are you assigning are you assigning uh, imaginary vectors to points in empty space? I am assigning a vector uh, to the loop that is spinning around in a loop. Res spinning with respect to what? Itself. It's spinning oh! around. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> with respect to itself. Thank welcome you. To the, welcome to the lab frame, brother. I mean, you know, like I said, this does this. This is, uh, you know, this is understood as the Sagnac effect. Yes. With respect to itself, absolute rotation. Yep. Because it wow. doesn't invoke an external frame. It's not with respect to the lab. It's not with respect to the distant stars. It's not with respect to Mars. It's with respect to itself. Yeah. But relativity that shouldn't produce a friend shift, and it definitely shouldn't be a friend shift directly proportional to the velocity with which it moves. No, that if it's rotational. If What's it, it rotating it, it, against? It's itself? It's oh, wait, how does that produce a fringe? It, because uh, he hooked it up to a device on the conveyor belt. Bro, this is the same thing as Sanyak's table. The emitter and detector are both on the rotating table. They're in the same rotating frame. There should be no fringe. It's the same thing. He's just taking it and showing that it happens not just in spin, but in a line. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the claim. But what he's you still doing, can't describe. You can, still can't explain the spin. All right. this is doing is showing that when the FOG is moving in a straight line, or when you flatten the loop out into a long straight segment, it works the exact same. And you can, instead of using the the radial equation for the loop, you can select a straight linear segment and use the linear equation on the linear segment and get the same result. Now, so, if you can get the same result using a linear equation, that means it's not radial motion, brother, uh, because nope, then it nope. wouldn't work. The two equations are not the same. Nope, that's not true. You're oh, wrong. I can use two different equations and plug yeah. in the same numbers and get the same result? That's not what I said. Oh, well, uh, that's the effect of what you said. That's it's the effect not. of it. It's not. So I can use the radial equation and the linear equation and get the same result with the same well, numbers? I, you could ask me what I, what I meant. Or you could just try to play the yes and no game until, you know. Piezo, is this covariance? Brother, ain't no such thing as covariance. Mm -hmm. uh, there no is, variance right now. But what, it, what, it yeah. is, what it is is converting uh, rotational to linear you know, momentum back and forth, which you can do because they are connected. Which you can do because they are connected. Yeah, okay, what does that mean? How does that have any bearing on the effect? It means what, is, it means what does being connected to have any bearing on the That cable doesn't matter. I mean, the cable is just to prove that they're moving the same. I, mean, I could disconnect that cable if I could keep them moving the same without it. So if I disconnect the cable, okay, then if I, if I put the fiber optic gyro in my car and I go straight ahead, is it going to show me the friendship? If the FOG is not moving uniformly, it's not in the same frame, and you are able to invoke a difference between frames. Mm -hmm. The entire point of it being connected, which you just admitted it's connected. Thank you for it that. Yeah. yeah, the whole point of it being connected is so that you can show that they're co-moving, which by the postulates of relativity, unless you're ready to abandon them, definitionally makes them part of the same frame. If they're part of the same frame, Guess what, Omni? Yeah, I know what you think. You think it's the measurements linear. are with respect to itself. <laughs> I know. I know what you. Th I, I understand what you think, but it's not I, what I think. It it's just a fact, bro. I mean, are yes. you going to fact? Well, tell me what I was wrong about what I just said. Co moving. It, co moving. Same frame, right? Einstein. Yes. No. Not no. If one's rotating okay. and one's not. So so now you're going against if your own one, paradigm. If, You've if, abandoned uh, Einstein. If one's ro let, me, let me finish. If one's rotating and one's not, those are different kinds of motion. So then how do they produce the same result? Because you're converting from one to another. Converting where? And you're the way that you're measuring your detector. They don't so, Bro, so there's just one reading. All you just have a reading of you just have a reading, right? It's and, a number of fringes. That's the reading. You have a formula though, and you use the formula 
by plugging in the values that are known and see if it predicts so, the fringes so, that are measured. Right. So, so what you're saying is that if you have this spinning loop without anything else connected to it, right? I have the I have the spinning loop part of the Sang of the Wang device. Yep. Okay. And I, I I have it rotating, and then it's you know, and then what? I will detect a a fringe shift if it moves linear or well, if it moves linearly you, yeah. you still detect a fringe shift. It, if wang was able to it's it we, we're not able to do this he would tr he would use it i don't know if you uh you know ever watched uh the magic school bus as a kid he would have had miss frizzle do her little magic school bus thing and shrink that fog down and literally put it inside the the, the optical mm -hmm. fiber mm -hmm. and put it inside it but since you can't do that because we we don't have magic Right. But he did the next best thing, which was just to put it right beside it, have it, have it co-move with it so that it's still part of the same frame. It doesn't matter. Now, the point is, is that the effect is occurring inside the optical fiber alone. Right. And that means it's being measured with – number one, it's being measured with respect to itself, but number two – he uses the linear equation, and since it produces this is this is the crux, right? Since the linear equation correctly predicts the measured fringe shift in the in this linear segment, and the radial equation correctly produces the fringe shift in the radial segment, like around the little wheels, and they both yield the same result, that means that the linear motion and the radial motion are equivalent. The way you would prove that they're not equivalent is that they would produce different results. The fact so you, they produce the same result means they're equivalent. It, it means you can translate. This is the translational velocity. This is like the Earth is the Earth's equator is turning at a thousand miles an hour, and people are like, "Oh my God, a thousand miles an hour!" But it's you know that's actually super slow. Yeah, translation is linear motion. Okay, right. So it, you can you know you can translate back and forth you know between those. Bro, did you say a thousand miles per hour is super slow? Yeah. <laughs> so, so what? So wait, 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 wait! I want to clear this up with sacred. So sacred. Uh, no, don't subject change. He no, was no, 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 no. I, I, yeah, I know, but. No, 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 no. Focus, 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 focus. My bad. I didn't mean to interject. I just thought that was hilarious. Go ahead, focus, focus. The segment is linear right there in the loop the straight part I'm, okay this I'm shows not, that no, linear no, motion no. is being measured no. by a sanyak device no it's not so that's you not said actually. earlier it was linear you just said it was translation you just you've said it twice now I, bro I, how are you gonna I, I now understand. change your word and say so, it's not so what i'm what i'm Telling you what's going on, but I'm, I'm going to. You're literally flip flopping all over the place, dog. Uh, you don't know which side to pick. You're stuck. Well, listen, my puppy. <laughs> I'm not your so, puppy, dog. Well, you, you're calling me dog. Okay. So listen. So sacred. The reason why a thousand miles an hour is. <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't care about your interpretation of how fast a thousand miles per hour. I just want to make sure I heard that clearly. Address piezo and why are you jumping back and forth between translation and motion or not? Go ahead, bro. Don't stay. Don't 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 redirect over here. Piezo, right on your ass, bro. Well, you shouldn't have laughed then. It, it well, we, we can come back laugh. to it. We can come back to it later. Stay on task. Stay on task. We can come back to it later. We're not, we we're, not to... getting any, we're not going to get anywhere with this. All right. Well, then your time's up. Then you forfeit your mic if you dis, if you want to discontinue the conversation. All right. All right. That's fine. So the reason why a thousand miles an hour is slow because it goes <laughs> around. You is not going to do that, bro. Address piezo. Address piezo. Damn, P.A.s, you got him running out of here? <laughs> straight, straight bounce. He was looking for that exit hard, dog. I, I know Wang. Oh, you can't talk to me. You just got talked to Wang bro. about, dog, and didn't have a goddamn clue about nothing. Bro, you know, and uh, Sacred, I know you don't know that much. Like, Omi's been in here a few times the last couple weeks, but he would, like, before that, he never really came through. 
I know him from Earth and Awakenings, bro. This is why I don't engage with him because it ends up – what ends up happening, bro, is we have to go through this super long, drawn-out conversation at which every turn becomes an inefficiency that wastes so much time just to make a simple point. But thank you for the moderation because you know that actually forced him to like stick to the topic. Right. And at the end, you saw what he tried to do. He tried to turn to, oh, what about this earth thing? No, 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 bro. No, 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 no. What did you just say? Right. So th thank you for holding him to it. But that's what always happens. This is why I don't I don't engage with him because it's the same pattern of behavior every time that something like this comes up. Uh, but I'm glad that we got that out because everybody got to hear it. Right. I mean, y'all heard the flip flop happening like two, if not, it might have been three. I must, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say two. Because those are the two I could put my fingers on, swapping back and forth, saying it was translation, it was linear. But then, then when he realized, oh no, I just broke my paradigm. Then he sw immediately was like, oh no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You don't have anywhere to go, bro. Sanyak, they haven't been able to explain Sanyak for over a hundred years. It's been like a hundred and thirteen years, and there's still no answer for it. Sanyak demonstrated – he literally did this experiment back in 1911, 1912 specifically to disprove relativity. In Einstein's original paper, it talks about how uh, how a closed loop uh, would basically be the same as like a geodesic for the Earth, uh, like a linear path, like a giant closed loop You know, because if you make the, the loop big enough, it's effectively linear because any part of it is going to be a straight line. Yeah, up in the jumbo, I put Einstein's 1905 paper, two quotes from it, right? So laying out the basic premise of how he's not going to assign velocity vectors to to uh, space where electromagnetic pro processes once took place, and then where his equations apply in the rotating frame, because like PZO was saying, you can extend it to infinity, and it's basically linear. And on top of that, um, there's a bunch of different other ways to uh, for relativity to account for uniform translatory or um, uniform rotation. So, you know, it definitely applies for, for the relativist. Otherwise, they, you know, just ask them about Thomas procession, right? So they would have to give that up, even though that's part of their, it's canonized lore now. But yeah, when you get into the two configurations of the interferometer, right, they're both deadly, right? So the first configuration is the co-moving uh, FOG with the, opti or with, the, with the loop. So relativity predicts that there's no relative motion between the two. So if you're an inertial observer, right, the way that they say that the Earth and Sun are moving, um, they, the relativity predicts that there's no fringe pattern, right? That's why Michelson-Morley, they say, produced a null. But when you look into the measurements, you know, obviously they measured a velocity, just not, just not one that was high enough for them to confirm heliocentrism. Actually, a velocity that would entirely refute it. And then the second configuration Wang did, where it's just the top linear portion that's moving with respect to a stationary detector, well, relativity predicts that an inertial observer will measure C as C, meaning that the speed of light will not be affected by the translational motion of the top portion of the interferometer. And the fact that it measured it proportional is a direct refutation to the first and second postulates. Right? It shows which inertial frames, um, that they're not all equally valid, and that the speed of light is not measured um, as C in an inertial frame. And we're looking at a first order measurement. There's no second order calculation here at all. Super pivotal to the, yeah, exactly, dude. So on, on that note, right, even if relativity did predict a fringe, the fringe that it would predict would be a function of the square of the velocity over C squared, which is much, 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 much smaller than what's actually measured. So it has no explanatory power over measurements of velocity regarding an interferometer. The measurements are first order and the velocity components are also first order, meaning that the velocity that was measured by the interferometer was was caused by that velocity. There's no, it's not like it was moving faster and there was a contraction and it's just a ratio of, of the square of that. No, it's directly proportional to what it is. Linear C plus V. One Sir. for one linear sum, linear velocity addition.
but you know, it, you know, I, I love the fact that like people listen to these higher, if you're listening right now, right. And you're a person who's, you know, not super well acquainted with Einstein. Don't get intimidated by it. Don't be like, oh my gosh, it's such this mystical, high level, mathematical, physical, scientific stuff that's so hard to understand. No, bro. If you can keep up with just listening, and this was kind of a this was kind of an intense conversation, but if you can just keep up with the the main points, right? And they try to keep the main points from getting out. They don't like the audience to hear the main points. But if you can just keep up with the main points, most people, you don't have to be super smart. Average people can understand this if they'll just pay attention, have their attention span focused long enough to hear what the points are, and use basic logic. You can comprehend these things. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, <laughs> as they as the saying goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if Jimmy's standing on the ground and and Jill's sitting in a truck and in the truck, Jill doesn't feel like she's moving. And on the ground, Jimmy doesn't feel like he's moving. But, you know, if the truck's driving 40 miles an hour, they get a 40 mile an hour difference between them. Right. That's basic Galilean relativity. But if they're both sitting in the truck, it don't matter how fast the truck's moving. There's no relative motion between them. So you wouldn't predict any difference in what they feel. That's the same thing here. You wouldn't predict any difference in what the two sides of the loop feel or two different parts in the loop feel two different directions because it's all in the same frame but when they measure it there's a friend shift and that friend shift is directly proportional to how fast they're moving so it's like taking the windshield off the truck right now that i take the windshield off there's a third element involved it's the wind when the wind wasn't there i couldn't tell how fast i was moving but when the wind's there now i can measure myself against the wind the wind in this analogy is the ether in the loop in the in the absolute lab frame right there's ether and when this loop's rotating it's rotating against the ether and that ether that it's rotating against is allowing it to create a difference right in the velocity it's plus or minus v against the ether so that's what's able to cause this physical effect even though they're co-moving in the same frame I hope y'all can understand the truck. That was That's a dude, that was a great one. All right, suppose we have two cyborgs playing ping pong. Right? 